on that as we get it. The global financial crisis is forcing a reassessment of all sorts of policies. The latest could be promises about reducing carbon emissions and tackling climate change. Environment ministers from around the world are holding a summit in the Polish city of Poznan. The aim is to move forward the United Nations talks on climate change. The meeting takes place at the halfway point in a process due to end one year from now with a new treaty to replace the Kyoto Protocol, which expires in 2012. Opening the conference, the UN Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon, said firm action was needed to deal with climate change. We all know the science, judging from the evidence presented over the past few, few years and few days, we know the problem is growing worse. Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, the world is watching us. The next generation is counting on us. We must not fail. Together, we have two crises, climate change and the global economy. But this crisis presents us with a great opportunity, an opportunity to address both challenges simultaneously. Well, let's discuss all that. Joining me from Washington now is Marlo Lewis from the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Marlo Lewis, so you can deal with both challenges simultaneously, the economic downturn and the need to do something about carbon emissions? Well, I think that's quite unrealistic. Uh, dealing with one crisis is, is always exceedingly difficult. So the idea that you can take on two at once, basically fight a two-front war, and somehow that achieves economies of scale or makes things easier, I think is a, is a bit silly. The reason why emissions go up in the world is because uh, people use energy, and most energy comes from fossil fuels. If you were to have a reduction in emissions worldwide, it would, because, it would be because we replaced fossil energy with something cheaper. But in fact, uh, alternative energies, renewable energies, are still more expensive, which is why in the United States, for example, only 2% of our electricity comes from renewable sources, despite decades of government subsidy and state mandates. So, so to say that now, when the global economy is contracting, we can afford to get more of our energy from these more expensive, more costly, less competitive sources is getting things exactly backwards. The U.S. President-elect Barack Obama said time and time again that maybe it's time for a new Green New Deal, uh, which would mean government money being pumped in to employ people in these areas and perhaps improve the technology. Well, I think that would be a waste of resources. Again, to put more of your capital, when capital is scarce, as it is now, into underperforming, uncompetitive technologies is not the way to create jobs. That's the way to make work uh, but prolong a recession. It doesn't sound as though you think there can be, at the moment, a new climate change deal. It's just the wrong time. Well, I think there will be a deal because, because so much political face is staked on achieving a deal. But I don't think that there will be a, a, a great deal of emission reduction. And even if we get some, it won't make any difference climatologically. I think one of uh, Ban Ki-moon, uh, the statement that we just heard from him is also completely wrong. He says things are getting worse. There has been no net warming of the planet since 1998, or if you want to pick a more fair baseline, since 2001. And, so, and this was not anticipated by any of the IPCC's climate models. So this suggests that the climate is less sensitive to, to rising greenhouse gas levels than the so-called consensus of scientists has been telling us. And presu presumably as well, the, the, ec the economic downturn, presumably, is also going to add to that because carbon emissions will be cut because of the economic cycle. Well, well yes, and, and that just shows that, that right now, given the, the technological state of the world, the only way we can achieve deep cuts in emissions is through deep cuts in the economy. Marlo Lewis, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Very interesting discussion live there. Marlo Lewis in Washington, thank you. You're with World News Today in 10 minutes.